What's going on everyone? Today we're talking about 2021.12.25.6. So this update contains a number of uh, new changes here, but there are other changes that are not listed and we're going to talk about those as well. Uh, so we have Skyforce Reloaded, which is this new game. Uh, I'm going to do a more in-depth video about this game uh, coming up on the channel, uh, but this is probably one of the better games that they've added to the Tesla so far. It's a classic arcade shoot 'em up uh, Basically, you can use a controller or your finger and you scroll your uh, finger back and forth and you have to shoot things and uh, you upgrade your spaceship. There's 13 levels, I believe, or 14 levels with two bonus levels. Uh, it is a pretty cool game, but definitely subscribe to the channel if you guys are interested in more uh, video footage of it. Uh, we have new language support over here, Finnish and Croatian language support now. So uh, you can go to control display and update the language. And then we have the cabin camera. So the cabin camera is going to be used for uh, safety risk and safety event collision. So if you get into an accident, the video footage will be sent back to Tesla. And they're saying the video clips will not be associated uh, with yourself to protect your privacy. I don't mind keeping the camera active, but I want a benefit to me. And I think the benefit to me would be not having to have my hands on the wheel as I'm driving in autopilot, uh, which would be fantastic. Uh, I don't mind sharing data. I just want something in return for the data that I'm sharing, right? Uh, that's just my thoughts, but it's a first good step. If more people have it enabled, they're able to track your, uh, your face and your attentiveness and eventually they'll probably have it so you don't have to have your hands on the wheel. So that is good. Uh, I'm pretty excited that this update, if you notice here, look at this, cold weather improvements. We've seen that for like half a year. So it's kind of nice to see some new stuff here listed, but there's one that they never listed and that's new UI. Uh, there's new UI changes and this has been a long, long pet peeve of mine with these updates. I feel like I'm always playing spot the difference uh, because there's changes that they do that they don't list. I wish they kind of listed out everything. And the UI changes, although small, are actually pretty neat. So uh, let's uh, let's check them out. So to make this easier, we got old outdated red, updated white, and we're gonna move back and forth to see if we can uh, spot the difference. So the first change that I noticed, which is probably the easiest one to recognize, is when you hit this bottom arrow, uh, you can see the bar goes all the way across. So you have all our icons from uh, edge to edge, basically, is uh, this is the old version. Whereas with the new version, when I click the arrow, you can see there is a gap on this side and a gap on that side. So it's more together. The icons are, there's less space in between uh, the icons now. So that has definitely changed. So one of the other updates, and this one I'm actually pretty pleased about, is the web browser. So you can see it has a new loading animation. So you're not sitting there waiting for the web browser to in infinitely load at the beginning. So you kind of have an idea of what's happening now. And not only that, uh, they have some new icons. So uh, the X, the back arrow and the front arrow are different. Uh, the favorites look slightly different, so it's a star now, and then there's like a folder with a star to show you what the favorites look like. So now this is the older version. As a comparison, if we hit web, you can see here it just sits there and waits and loads. So we don't know what's happening with the web browser. It's obviously the web browser that's loading up, but more importantly, you can see here the X, the back arrow and stuff, it's just different. It's not as, uh, it takes up more space, I believe. And in the top right, we have the heart pl with the plus and then the heart, which is actually a rather confusing system uh, because heart plus and heart, uh, too many hearts. And yeah, you can see what I was looking at on here. So this is the phone app, which I'm gonna be blurring out a lot of information here, um, unfortunately for privacy reasons, but you can get the general idea. So messages is like this, no new messages, which I'm gonna receive one in a sec. Then we have favorites, which just goes down in a vertical line. You can see the name, the number on the left, and then message and phone call on the right. Then we have recent calls, which looks pretty similar. We have names, numbers on the left, and time and who called what on the right. Then we have contacts, which is just the name going down, and we have our dialer uh, lastly. So this is what it used to look like. 
Uh, we're going to do a comparison of what it looks like uh, currently because this has changed completely. Uh, but I did just receive a text message and it says, Randy, hello, red Tesla. And I can click it and uh, this is what we have. And we can hit reply and so on and so forth. Uh, let's go check it out on how it looks on the new update. So this is what the new call system looks like. Uh, on the main page, uh, it has your recent calls and the dialer on the right. So there's no more dedicated dialer option. Uh, and all your recent calls go down on the left. So that is new. It also takes up the full page, which is different than before. We have messages, which says phone connected. New messages will appear here, which again is a full screen uh, system. So this is slightly different. Now you can see the message on the right with the name on the left. So it looks different uh, because now you can see all the names coming down. Unfortunately, it still clears when you get out of your car. I kind of wish to sync with your messages so you can kind of see them all and click contacts and just go and change your messages rather quickly. But unfortunately, it's still not a thing. Contacts looks basically the same. They're just utilizing more of the screen now. And lastly, we have our favorites. Uh, which, sorry for all the uh, blurring out here, but uh, the favorites have names at the top, numbers underneath, and then quick options to phone and text. Uh, they're big, huge boxes now, which I don't know if I like. I feel like this isn't, uh, I, I get why they're doing it, because if you're driving, you're actually clicking, which you shouldn't be doing, you should be using the voice commands, but if you're driving and you're clicking, it's just a little bit easier to click. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure if I like this change because I kind of liked it before. It's just easier to find your contacts where now I'm kind of looking everywhere. Uh, so this is the new phone app. So there is also changes to the theater. So this is the old version. You can see the Netflix, YouTube, Twitch, and Tesla tutorial icons, which are big boxes, versus the new version, which is just the Netflix icon, YouTube icon, Twitch icon, and Tesla tutorials where it's not boxed, it's just like a white background. So that was everything I could find, uh, and it was fun playing Spot the Difference, jumping back and forth between both cars. I really wish Tesla just told us in the release notes that I didn't have to do this experiment. Uh, but nonetheless, here's my thoughts on this. Why is Tesla spending time doing a uh, UI changes if there's gonna be a whole new user interface coming? So, kind of strange. Do you think there's a whole new user interface on the way? Or is this what we have and they're just gonna continue to tweak it? Uh, what are your thoughts? Leave a comment down below. Uh, make sure to thumbs up the video and make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.